Has the property market topped? Well, that's what some of the experts are saying. Initially, analysts at the investment bank USB called the top of the housing market a few weeks ago, suggesting both market activity and price growth will now moderate. This week, CoreLogic statistics showed that their five-city aggregate hedonic home value index was basically steady over the month of April. Tim Lawless, head of CoreLogic, explained that it's the regulatory changes that slowed the pace of investment growth that slowed down our property markets. So the question you may be wondering is, is it time to start worrying? Let's be honest, the last couple of years have been a dream run for property investors. Money was cheap, banks were falling over each other to land, our markets were booming, particularly in Melbourne and Sydney, and the underlying shortage of supply, together with rising population growth, created a perfect storm for booming property markets. But the reality is, our markets are changing, and the conditions which drove dramatic growth over the last couple of years are not going to be driving our property markets in the future. However, we need to be cautious in calling a market peak after just one month's results. And of course, we recognise this not just one Australian property market. Each state's at its own stage of its property cycle. And then within each state, there are various sub-markets defined by geographic location, by price point, by property type. And each of these sub-markets are at different stages of their own property cycle. So clearly, while overall prices in Sydney or Melbourne didn't rise in the month of April, The value of some properties rose, others remained the same and others fell. That's how averages are made up. So the question is, where are our property markets heading now? Some commentators are suggesting it's about, the market's about to turn, citing lower auction clearance rates and slower investor finance. They're suggesting we're at the top of the property cycle. Sure, auction clearance rates have dropped. They're not in the heady 80 uh, percent plus auction clearance rates, but they're still in the 70 percent range. And while loans to investors dropped a bit in the last quarter, there's still m- more investors around than there are good investment grade properties. So I see a period of lower, more moderate property price growth for the rest of the year, followed by a period of stagnating property values and moderate price falls in some areas. Now, this doesn't mean the sky is falling and we're doomed, as some overseas experts are suggesting, but investors won't be assured of strong capital or rental growth in the immediate future. In reality, it was never assured anyway. This means as we transition to the next stage of the property cycle, investors are going to need to strategically position themselves for the next few years. So what will drive our property markets in the next little while? They're going to be driven by broader macroeconomic factors as well as by local microeconomic factors. At the macro level, things like our economy, interest rates, availability of credit, consumer confidence, world economic events, government policies, government interference really, isn't it? And external political factors will influence the strength of our real estate markets. At the more local level, economic growth, jobs growth and population growth will drive or hinder property price growth in those local areas. Of course, supply and demand is also going to be an important local factor. Property is really a game of finance. In every property cycle I've invested in over the last 44 years, they've always eventually come to an end because of finance. In the old days, it was what was called a credit squeeze, where the government induced a credit squeeze and finance was difficult to obtain. Since deregulation, it's been the Reserve Bank raising interest rates which has put an end to each property boom. But this time round, it's back to a credit squeeze. Now, I'm surprised no one's used that term before. Maybe they're not old enough to remember it. But um, with Essex macroeconomic, uh, macroprudential controls, what they've done is they've tightened the screws on property investor lending. Now, this is not a bad thing. The strength of the Sydney and Melbourne property markets was unsustainable. The fact that around half the purchases in some locations in these cities were made to investors, that could really lead to unstable markets. I'd rather see a softening of our markets, like I'm now expecting, in a lower interest rate environment, like we're experiencing, rather than a general recession or a market crash that we could have had if we were having high interest rates stopping our property cycle. So what's ahead? Let's start by examining some of the factors affecting our property markets. Firstly, we're going to have subdued economic growth. Australia's economic growth is below its long-term average, and this trend is likely to continue considering the world's economic environment. And this is likely to keep interest rates on hold for the foreseeable future. Similarly, jobs growth is fragmented. Almost all permanent 
job growth is occurring in Victoria and New South Wales. When I say that, it's really Melbourne and Sydney, which is driving local population growth, the local economy, and that's why the property markets are booming. And this trend of fragmented jobs growth is likely to occur, continue in the foreseeable future. Because that's where the higher paying, permanent as opposed to part-time jobs are being created. We're also in for periods of lower inflation with the CPI having just ticked up a little bit recently into the Reserve Bank's desired range. But this together with our weak economy means the Reserve Bank is likely to keep interest rates the same for quite some time. Another factor affecting our property markets is fickle consumer sentiment. Not only our local problems in Australia, but the world's economic problems and political problems is going to mean that consumer confidence will remain low. When people are uncertain, they tend to stop spending. And I foresee further macroeconomic controls. So even though the Reserve Bank is going to keep interest rates on hold for a while, in my opinion, it's very likely that it's going to be a bit harder to get finance in the near future before it gets easier as APRA keeps tightening the screws on property investors. Another factor affecting our property markets is slower population growth and it's basically concentrating on the two states where all the jobs are being created, Melbourne and Sydney. And another factor affecting our property markets is going to be significantly less foreign investment. Foreign investment is, as we know, fueled in particular the inner city high-rise booms of our big capital cities, but it's expected to halve this year. Last year there were 40,000 applications by foreign investors to the Foreign Investment Review Board. This year it's likely to be 15,000. Um, and I guess it's partly because we've taken out the welcome mat from them, we've made it harder for them, and at the same time, back home, China's made it harder for them to get money out. So in summary, like it or not, our markets are moving to the next phase of the property cycle, one of more moderate growth. Obviously, there will be outperformers and underperformers. As a property investor, it's your job to find the sort of property that's going to outperform the averages and remain stable. In other words, not fluctuate in value a lot. This is likely to occur where economic growth is going to lead to jobs growth, basically in our service industries, which is going to lead to population growth, which is going to lead to property demand as well as consumer confidence because people are going to feel secure about their jobs. And in general, this is going to be in the inner and middle ring suburbs of our three big capital cities in the foreseeable future. If you'd like to get some help assessing your current property portfolio or you're looking at taking advantage of the opportunities of the market because there still are opportunities out there, why not have a chat with the team at Metropole? We have no properties for sale but access to every property on the market. So give us a call at Metropole or click at the link at metropole.com.au and we look forward to being part of your wealth creation journey.